We hope that what we teach our students today will be relevant to their lives in 10 years. But technology is changing rapidly. Can we future-proof what we teach? No. But we can at least make it technology-resistant. Now, making our classes technology-resistant is going to require knowing what the state of the art is. So for under $20, students can buy a scientific calculator that will perform symbolic calculations on fractions and radicals, return exact values for trigonometric functions, and come in a variety of colors. These calculators are allowed on all standardized exams like the SAT, the AP exam, the ACT, and so on. For under $200, students can buy a graphing calculator. These are also allowed on all standardized exams, and in fact they are required for the AP calculus exams. But why pay for these things? For free, students can use Desmos as a graphing calculator, Wolfram Alpha as a computer algebra system, and ChatGPT, which can solve almost every problem in a standard text at levels up to and including calculus, and their capabilities are evolving rapidly. And so the important question we have to ask, what's the value of learning something that can be done by a free internet app? If we don't ask this question, someone else will, and we won't like their answer. So we can adapt to technology or become irrelevant. So let's consider. If a solution can be described as a sequence of algebraic steps, a computer can implement it faster, cheaper, and more accurately than any human. So teaching students to follow an algorithm teaches them to compete with a machine in an area where the machine has all the advantages. They will always lose this competition. We need to focus on things machines can't do. One quick note. This does not mean we should completely abandon teaching algorithms. Students should still be able to do certain things by hand. However, they need to learn more than just the algorithm. It's helpful to think of the algorithm as the middle step of a problem sandwich. The first step is translating the problem into a mathematical equation that can be solved using an algorithm. Second, using the algorithm. And then third, interpreting the solution to answer the original question. The middle step, where we use the algorithm, can be done by a computer faster, cheaper, and more accurately than by a human being. So in many respects, it's the least important step. The value of our courses comes from the first and third steps, but these additional steps take additional time. So where does that time come from? So the thing to remember, students will spend time doing what they know how to do. This is never what you've just taught them to do. And so this leads to an important guiding principle. If it's not directly relevant to the concept you're teaching, minimize its importance. Some examples. Arithmetic in any college-level math class. Algebraic simplification in calculus. To see how this works, let's consider a fairly standard problem. Let's try to solve a linear equation like 7x plus 12 equals negative 9. So our standard solution, we'd subtract 12, we multiply by the reciprocal of the coefficient of x, and we'd simplify to get our final answer. And this is the solution we'd expect from our students. But what's important to realize is there are several steps in here that are not algebra. They're arithmetic. The subtraction, the multiplication, the simplification. And these are not relevant to the algebraic concepts. The important thing here is mathematically there's no difference between solving for x in this equation and solving for x in this equation or solving for x in this equation. However, many students who can solve the first have difficulty with the second and are unable to even begin the third. So let's consider a different solution that emphasizes the algebra and not the arithmetic. So again, we subtract 12 and don't bother doing the arithmetic, and then we multiply by the reciprocal of the coefficient, and don't bother 
doing the simplification. This emphasizes the algebraic steps and de-emphasizes the arithmetic. And part of the reason that this is a better approach is if we consider that second equation, we use exactly the same steps and we get a final answer where if we need to know the value, we can enter it into a calculator. And here's the important thing, by delaying all the computations to the end of the problem, we avoid round off error. And as for the last problem, the exact same steps can be applied. And this is a way that encourages the idea that these three problems are really the same type of problem. Technology is constantly advancing, but for now, humans are still better than computers at interpreting visual data, that is to say graphs, ignoring irrelevant data, that is to say tables and text, and connecting concepts. For example, here's a problem you might find in pre-calculus find the domain of a rational function. This problem can be solved by following a sequence of algebraic steps, so a computer can solve it easily. And in fact, we don't even have to type the problem in, we can just submit a picture of the problem. On the other hand, computers have difficulties analyzing visual data, while humans are good at it. So computers have a hard time with this version of the problem, but humans find it easy if they understand what they're looking for. Computers also have a hard time ignoring data while humans are good, sometimes too good, at ignoring data. So computers have a hard time with data presented in tabular form. But again, humans find it easy if they understand what they're looking for. Most importantly, humans are very good at chaining ideas together, while machines are very bad at it. So it's important to emphasize the connections between important concepts. This also addresses one of the most common student complaints. The exam was nothing like the homework. Why do students say this? There are reasons why students might say this, but one of the big ones is that students don't often see the larger context. So, in individual homework problems, students might need to find function values from a graph, find the zeros of a function, or find the domain of a function. An exam problem might combine all three into a single question. And again, humans are very good at making connections while machines are very bad at it. But making connections is a habit. To encourage students to look for the connections, don't ask the question right away. Instead ask what questions could be asked from the given information. If you do this, this will also serve as a continuous review of course material. For example, given the two graphs shown, the following questions review key material in pre-calculus and can be asked of every graph encountered. Find the x and y intercepts. Solve the equations, find values for function compositions, and, importantly, are there values for which the quotient is undefined? So all of this may be a lot to take in, so here's the really quick version. Roughly speaking, any problem with an explicit algebraic equation or expression can be solved faster, cheaper, and more accurately by a computer. But a problem that requires interpreting a graph text, or table of values is going to require human intervention. While some algorithmic facility is essential, our courses need to focus on what machines can't do. Otherwise, there is no value to our courses and no reason to take them.